So my name is um, Elizabeth. Um, I am the patient support specialist team lead for My Health Africa. So for My Health Africa, we are a full service platform whereby we assist patients to get specialized treatment, um, both locally and regionally, that is within Africa. So for My Health, we're incorporated with um, international medical treatment, whereby we assist patients um, to go overseas for treatment. So for the hospitals that we work with um, overseas, we have um, Bamrugrad International Hospital in Thailand. We have Apollo Hospital in India, and we have American Hospital in Dubai, among many other uh, major hospitals that we work with overseas. So this evening's webinar, we're going to be discussing matters in regards to bones and joints. So a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our social media platform, just for the audience to be able to access it and for people who um, will not be able to uh, maybe join this webinar today. Um, we'd also like our um, audience to interact with us, maybe ask us a couple of questions that maybe Dr. Dion and Dr. Verusha can answer at the end of the session on the Q&A forum. Um, so let me just jump into talking about chiropractic and physiotherapy health center. So it's a well-established clinic whereby they have three branches. There's one at Karen, um, there's Park, Karen, sorry, Westlands, and there's Ridgeways whereby they, now they offer both all services, which is um, chiropractic care, therapeutic massage, um, physiotherapy, among many other services that they offer. Um, so just to give you a brief um, introduction of our guest speakers today, we have Dr. Dion Jogu, who is the head physiotherapist at Chiropractic and Physiotherapy Health Center. She has over 40 years of experience in matters regarding physical therapy and physiotherapy. Um, on the side, we have Dr. Verusha, who is, also, is a chiropractor, sorry, who has over 10 years of experience from South Africa in matters regarding chiropractic. Sorry, chiropractic. Um, so maybe I'll let you to introduce yourselves, docs, so that maybe the audience can you know, know more about you. Hey, good evening, everybody, and thank you for inviting us on this webinar. It's a pleasure to be part of the chiropractic section of the Chiropractic and Physiotherapy Health Center. The first thing, and thank you for that introduction. So as stated, I'm a chiropractor that qualified in South Africa, and um, my experience was doing my internship where they first doing ward rounds in the hospitals and then working in the private specialized chiropractic clinics under obviously qualified doctors. I've then had experience working in the rural and disadvantaged communities. Once I graduated, and, or I did a master's thesis in order to graduate, and then I opened up two of my own practices. One was a family practice, which we saw general uh, chiropractic patients, and then one was a corporate chiropractic practice, which was tailored for seeing patients that developed neuromuscular skeletal conditions in the corporate environment. Um, thereafter, I also did part-time lecture for human anatomy and physiology to biomedicine students, just to give back from an academic point of view. I then went and worked for one year as a chiropractor in India, and thereafter, I been asked to come to work in the beautiful country of Nairobi in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. My name is Dion Jogu. Thank you for inviting us for this webinar. It is very interesting and I disappear for taking us. We don't take you for granted for calling us. You have been seeing patients from your clinic or from your body, and we have been very grateful for it. I have been practicing physiotherapy since 1982. That is even before, that is after training. And I have worked in both in the public and private areas. With that, I found that I am going to retire at her age. And the, after retiring, I found that people are still following me to give these services. I know people take physiotherapy as just as simple as possible because of what they experience they get in our hospitals, in our government hospitals, and somebody hates it. But let me tell you, physiotherapy is the best profession you can have for the life you want to have a lifestyle. Free, painful lifestyle. 
and you can be able to live longer than that without any issues of your what we call musculoskeletal. So we are ready to tell you how much benefits you can get from what we call physical medicine. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Dion and Dr. Verusha for that. We really appreciate also having you guys, you know, share more information in regards to chiropractic and physiotherapy, you know, and also for the audience to also learn also as well. Um, yeah, so for um, chiropractic, maybe Dr. Verusha give us more information in regards to chiropractic. Absolutely. So chiropractic historically is very established in the West, especially in the United States of America, where this profession was born initially. So from America, it spread to Canada, Mexico, and South America, where everybody's familiar with chiropractic and they know when to go to a chiropractor. The biggest problem is in Africa, for example, there's only two universities that provide this specialized medical qualification, and that is a university in Durban and a university in Johannesburg. And those two universities have to service the rest of Africa. So the biggest problem is we don't have enough chiropractors in our continent. Therefore, people are unaware of what exactly this is. So with regards to chiropractic, chiropractic is that part of very specialized evidence-based medicine that focuses very clearly on the examination, diagnosis, treatment, as well as prevention on any neuromusculoskeletal conditions that are affecting the body. Now we're using big medical terms, but what actually neuromusculoskeletal simply refers to, it's all the muscles in the body, all the bones in the body, where bones meet and form joints, there's ligaments and tendons that will support and strengthen the movement of those joints. And finally, the nervous system, because the nerves run through, run through these structures to coordinate that movement. That is our area of speciality. So you will come to a chiropractor who we are highly specialized, trained in these neuromusculoskeletal conditions. And our main focus is the spine. So sometimes colloquially, you hear people refer to us as spinal doctors. Mm -hmm. Now, how we approach what we do is, <clears throat> excuse me. So while chiropractors um, look at symptoms related to the neuromusculoskeletal system, how we actually approach what we do excuse me, it's been a long day, we've been talking quite a lot and that's why I sound like this. But while we understand the patient will come to us presenting various symptoms, symptoms that they'll present to us is pain, discomfort, decreased range of movement, etc. We would assess that, yes. But how we approach treatment is we want to find out what is the root cause of that problem, giving the patient these symptoms. We then want to find the root cause of the problem, correctly diagnose it, because if we are able to get, root, uh, get rid of the root cause of the problem, these symptoms go away. If a patient wants to treat symptoms, they can, but then they can go to a pharmacist and just take pain medication and anti-inflammatories. That would help relieve your symptoms for that time, but it doesn't address the root cause of the problem. So you're not looking at curative treatment, you're looking at symptomatic treatment to get you back. While that root cause of the problem is still there, getting worse and worse, and eventually over a six month or one year period, you come to us and then it's quite advanced. So that is why chiropractic treatment is not known as symptomatic relief. We are more designed as curative relief. So that's just the basics on what is chiropractic and chiropractic treatment. Thank you. Okay. I'm sure the audience have really got a good start off with the doctor of chiropractic. When I was in the class, the definition of physiotherapy was the treatment of diseases, injuries, and musculoskeletal deformities, either acquired deformities or born with uh, the deformities, which are treatable only by physical means in opposed to drugs. So whatever you get in physiotherapy, you will never get the drugs to take to be able to heal those conditions. The other thing is that most of the people who are defined for physiotherapy is usually because the doctor has treated, 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 and you are not getting better. The only thing they tell you, let's try physiotherapy. Well, physiotherapy is a disciplinary by itself, which deals mostly with, the, as the doctor said, muscular skeletal disorders. 
where the muscles meet and where the muscles end. Those are the areas we deal with. It has come to our point that despite the injuries one gets to go to physiotherapy, we have the technology of the computers, which has come to form many deformities to our youth and teenagers, even our elderly people who are more into the computer technology. They are causing deformities, which I said acquired, especially the computer working people, they end up to have very bad spine or back problems caused by their technology and occupation. And to say because of this based clinic, we have found that the people we are having, 70% are the youth that is between 18 to 50 due to the nature of their work. And it is causing them to have deformities, pains, and even poor postures unable to do their daily activities after the working position. And that is what we are having so much today. And that one can't be relieved by medical people, doctors, and it can't be relieved with drugs. The only thing is go for physiotherapy and chiropractic, and we put you back to normal shape. So that is what physiotherapy is. And just a quick one, just to close on this, mm -hmm. just to bring in the pride and the uniqueness of our profession. When we look at our advancing modern world at the moment, it's very technologically advanced and digitally driven. But the one thing we can say with pride about physiotherapy and chiropractic, we still maintain our treatment that is hands-on. So you don't need to bring in any advanced technology that takes away from patient-doctor interaction. It's so very highly tailored, highly personalized. And the fact that we still use our hands to bring relief and curative treatment to patients is not a small thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we will celebrate our profession no matter how advanced the world gets. Thank you. Okay. Conditions, common conditions, I have said. So I shall go first with the common conditions that a chiropractor sees, and then Dr. Dionisa will go on to the physiotherapy ones. But you will find that there's a link between the two. The reason being, when we look at neuromusculoskeletal, and I said we talk about bones, muscles, joints, nerves, tendons, and ligaments, there's never a time when muscles work on its own, independent of bones and joints, and vice versa. The function of muscles is to attach to bones and joints to provide moving, movement for them. Therefore, they work together, they need to be treated together. And that's why the physiotherapist and the chiropractor are sitting together because we collaborate on providing treatment plans to give complete treatment to any patient with NMS disorders. So when we categorize the disorders, they are various and we're going to try and abstain from using medical terms, but the common terms that a person can relate to and understand. The first area we're going to look at is the spine because it's the central part of the structure of our body and the spinal cord, which is an important neural tissue that runs through it. So the common conditions that patients come to us with, starting at the top, would be neck pain. Neck pain and then that coupled with headaches. I don't know many people that can tell me they've never had a headache or have never suffered neck pain at some point in their lives for various positive reasons. The next area we look at is the upper back pain, and that is normally that area that is between our shoulder blades. Then we go to the middle back, we also look at low back. So it's all these spinal issues that happen in that area. And just before the low back, we look at pain and any pathologies that arise in the pelvic region. As you can see, that area has lots of muscles, bones, joints, tendons, and ligaments, and there's nerves running through it. So these are the most common ailments that patients come to us with complaints. Having said that, we then move on to the rest of the neuromusculoskeletal system. We look at the upper limbs, with the upper limbs, we would then look at pathologies and treatment of the main joints in the upper limb, which is the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and then the areas between it, which is all pathologies related to your arm, your forearm, and then your hand. Then we go on to the lower limb, which is the lower part of the body. We look at the hip joint, the knee joint, the ankle, and then the areas in between it, which is the thigh, the leg, and then the foot. From that, which is what is very common, we then look at acquired trauma. Acquired trauma is something specific happened to injure that part of the body. The most common acquired trauma that we get, unfortunately, is motor vehicle accidents. 
and they come with a whole range of injuries. The most common one being whiplash, and most people can relate to that word whiplash. We look at um, occupation related injuries. So, for example, a corporate employee that sits for prolonged periods of time at their desk and they're using the mouse all the time, we're finding that they are developing a repetitive strain injury that's commonly known as tennis elbow that affects the outer aspect of the elbow. Most people in this day and age, we're giving a diagnosis of tennis elbow and they've never played tennis in their life, but it's because of an occupational related injury. Other trauma injuries include sports injuries, and there are a variety of sports injuries can arise. We look at injuries on duties. Um, and I think the last one is the fall injuries. So we take all of this for granted, but any of these acquired trauma tends to first affect the outer part of your body, which is the muscles, bones, and joints. Lastly, with chiropractors, and these are what we would group into miscellaneous uh, pathologies. Number one is fibromyalgia which is diffuse body aches and pains, start off from the head to the feet, that a patient will find pain and discomfort in all different compartments of the body. The second one is pregnancy and post-pregnancy, low back pain and pelvic pain. And the last one, believe it or not, chiropractic treatment is the leading form of treatment for a condition called infantile colic. So when babies are born with a lot of gastric distress, in a lot of pain, they have a lot of bloating, it's very difficult to birth them. We actually are trained to treat babies and relieve them of those symptoms. The earlier we see a baby with infantile colic, the quicker we are able to resolve those symptoms. And I think that covers chiropractic treatment for conditions quite holistically. That's very intensive. Everybody submit this hearing to that. Now, common conditions be treated by physiotherapists. As she has said, we all come with the trunk pains. The first thing I will say is that whatever you do, either sitting, standing, walking, or bedding to do your work, the person who informs you on what to do is what we call nerves. The nerves of the head, which are contained here, they usually tell you to enterprise or to tell you the best way to see things. But now from the neck, and down to the tailbone is all what we call spinal nerves. These are directly from the spine. Whenever you have any pain of anywhere, either the knee, either the nose, or either the neck, it tells that the nerve supplying that section is being affected. How does it get affected? You have either stayed in a bad position or bent position, which is causing where the nerve entry to that muscle is affected. And this is what we call in medical terms, spasm. If you stay in a long way for a long period, it will always cause the muscle to go to tightness. So when it goes to tightness, the pain will be where the tightness is starting. It will be either the whole neck, the whole arm, or the lower back. That is what is the sign for us to know that you have a strained muscle. If you come with a joint paining, that means you have a strained or strained joint. So muscles, if they are not provided properly by the nerve supply, they will cause what we call spasms. And that is the most common condition you do see in, in the in physiotherapy. Very common in nowadays. The second one is ligaments and tendons. When we somebody will say that tendons and ligaments are found only in our joints, like the way we are saying bones and joints, you will find that people will say the joints are either in the upper arms or in the lower arms. Those are not only the tendons we have or the ligaments we have. Immediately you finish your lower back. If you look at that picture showed called vertebral disc, you can see down there, there is another bone. That bone has no nerves at all to give to the body. So you will find that most of us strain or strain our ligaments of the pelvis, which are so many ligaments. Even when sitting, when you are sitting, sometimes you sit in battery 
and spraying the ligaments which join that bony called sacrum and coccyx. If those ligaments are all sprained and they are not able to support you properly, you will come to us with a back pain. And that back pain causes the whole muscles of your upper back up to the neck to be in spasms. So tendons are not only the joints of the bones we can see, even those who are hidden with the big muscles. You might be having pain on the back, but you will find that what is the problem is ligaments on your muscles of the bottom, which people call boots. If they are spasm, the ligaments around there, they are all affected. The other thing is about trauma. You might go and slide in the bathroom or even get to a car and the matatu bang the forward and the back ones. You know, walk away saying you are okay. As the doctor said, you always get what you call weak crash. So whenever you have a, doesn't matter how small the accident is, that's what you call trauma. In a slight, even the kitchen, even the bathroom, which will shake your body. That is what we call whiplash. There is a muscle, a tendon, a ligament, or even a nerve stretched, you will get pain. So those are the conditions the physiotherapist will go on. Sports injuries, the sports people will come with a painful knee, painful ankle, but you will find that that was not the origin of your problem. It is somewhere else within the body which means the nerve is irritated, so it is not giving enough message to the other parts of the body. Those are the, some of the conditions we look at. The other one is usually at work. People can sit in a bad position for too long. They will injure their neck or their lower back, but they will never know until one day they find that they are limping because their right leg can't move. That is an injury at work because of a poor, posture when they are seated. So the poor posture can cause you to have injuries at work. And that way, that is some conditions we physiotherapists do. The other things are occupational hazards, which we call occupational hazard injuries. Maybe you are, maybe you are a gardener and you have to do the gardening in the proper place all the time. Due to repetition of whatever you are doing, it will cause you to have some injuries. It might not be very direct, but at the end, you will have what we call degenerative diseases. That is your bones are wearing out due to the position or you take when you are doing your work. If you are a secretary, you find you have to use your hands so much. By the time you finish, you will find that you can't close your hands properly. You can't touch your fingers properly. They can't be, which means you have a strain in the wrist and the joint around it there. Yeah, those are some of the conditions we physiotherapists to do. So, with our occupational and our day to day problems, we get a lot of injuries to our muscles, joints, tendons, and ligaments. And that causes that. The other things physiotherapy treat is what we call non communicable diseases. You will find somebody has been working for too long and too strenuous. Come up and they go to see the doctor, they are told they are having high blood pressure. They say, I don't have any problem, I'm not stressed, I'm not thinking. But that's sitting in there, and you are not doing exercises or stretches to be able to feel your muscles, your heart to do the job. So your muscles is working, but your heart is not working it starts accumulating. So you will come to us with that high blood pressure just because your body is like one compact thing. It's not being doing what it's supposed to be. So you will have some people even come later, they get diabetes, even only blood pressure. Next time your heart is overdoing the job. So those are the, some of the conditions we tell people to come to us as physiotherapists and we manage them. The other one is what we call autoimmunity to many diseases. For example, you will find somebody with a condition called rheumatoid arthritis, that is deformities in the fingers, legs, and knees due to either some immunity from not your fault, but something. So we manage those conditions of 
we call them rheumatoid arthritis. People know about the lupus. Those are the conditions we also treat. Apart from that, the way she said, women after pregnancy and the deliveries or before, they get complications. There's no way you carry a baby for nine months, go through delivery, and there is no injury on your body. So we ask mothers after delivery or before delivery, they should come and see a physiotherapist combined with the chiropractor to put them back before they get the next baby. Then the babies themselves, they get injury during delivery. If you find your baby has an issue, crying, not able to put them, bring the baby to the physiotherapist and the chiropractor, we look at them, we will be able to diagnose and know what is the problem. Yeah? And then we give people exercises to do as physiotherapists to continue with life. These are major conditions we usually see. These are a few, but we have more. So when we look at what chiropractic treatment involves, our first session is normally very intense because it's a one-hour session. The first thing we we'll do with the patient is we have a discussion where we want to take a comprehen comprehensive case history of that patient, which involves their past medical history, drug history, family history, occupation and psychosocial history. Occupation has its own risks for certain neuromusculoskeletal conditions. And then patients outside of work, they have are involved in certain extracurricular activities and hobbies, hobbies such as hiking, maybe they like playing sports on the weekends. We need to understand what do they expose their physical body to on a daily basis so we can already understand what are the risks of all these activities affecting the neuromusculoskeletal condition or system. We then go over to that examining bed and we do a comprehensive physical examination from inspection. And just by inspecting the spine especially, we can see a lack of alignment, etc. We do palpation, range of movement, we have specific orthopedic tests. At that stage, either we know enough and we have confidence to give the diagnosis, or in some cases, we may need to refer the patient out for diagnostic interventions to confirm what our differential diagnosis may be. So it could be x-rays, MRIs, CT scans, blood tests, or bone density tests. But it's very critical for chiropractic treatment that we get the correct diagnosis because we want to treat to cure that problem. And then we put a treatment plan in place and then we can start with treatment itself. Like I said, it is conservative and non-invasive treatment. Mm -hmm. So the major chiropractic treatment that involves, as you can see on the slide, is the take chiropractic adjustments. So what chiropractic adjustments are is we look at each of the joints that are affected in that part of the body and we actually manually mobilize and manipulate that joint in an attempt to realign the spine and reactivate that joint and bring movement back. So every time you adjust a joint, you automatically increase range of movement of that joint. And then by default, if range of movement is increased, pain will be decreased. At the same time, when the adjustment takes place, it causes increased blood flow going directly into a joint. Increasing blood flow in any part of the neuromusculoskeletal system is positive and required because increased blood flow means we have fresh blood flowing to that area, carrying oxygen, nutrients, and all the other healing cells that that part of the body requires to heal. Whenever fresh blood flows into an area, the toxic or non-fresh blood is forced to flow out of that area. So an accumulation of fluid with the carbon dioxide, toxins, and radicals, etc being stagnant in that area is then forced to leave that area. At the same time, when we adjust, it immediately increases the firing of the nerves in that area. So we activate the nervous system. If a patient has a chronic problem, we have to do a few adjustments so that we can reprogram that nervous system to function as it was in a pre-injury state. So that is very important. Therefore, based on how we treat, do our treatment, you can see that it is conservative and it is non-invasive. And in this way, we try and prevent surgery as much as we can from treating the body from the outside. Because when you look at the structure of the spine, it is very complex. And once we do surgery in that area, we can't go back and change it. There are certain side effects from all surgery that takes place in the spine. 
So what we do is we try and prevent surgery as much as we can, but there are many cases where we get to a point that we find the conservative and non-invasive treatment is not enough, and then we have to refer to the orthopedic surgeon to actually have invasive and surgical treatment. But like I say, we leave that for the last resort. We try and do as much as we can to prevent that. Another aspect of chiropractic treatment is once you start with it, if a patient has already been on any over-the-counter medication to treat their symptoms, once you start with chiropractic treatment, you don't need to use that over-counter medication anymore. So pain medication, anti-inflammatories, muscle relaxants, patients will stop using it. And in this day and age, that is very important to stop taking that medication on a long-term basis. These are the medications, especially with the pain meds and the anti-inflammatories, there's an addictive potential. And when a patient gets addicted to that medication, it becomes more difficult to treat because there's a psychological overlay that comes into the treatment of the patient. Long-term use of pain medication, anti-inflammatories and muscle relaxants will eventually strain the liver, will eventually strain the kidney, and that's what we want to try and stop. To try. Therefore, we try and stop the patient taking the medication. And lastly, just to finish off, chiropractic treatment with the spinal manipulations and the alignments that we do can and what we actually want to do is become more proactive in treating our body. In the lives that we live in this day and age, all the activities that we participate in, whether it is occupational, that we're using all the technology, whether it's our, it's our kids at school using technology, whether we are all using our phones all the time, and I don't know anyone who's sitting quietly and not using their phones, we are all victims of the strain of using the modern technology. So what we try and encourage, especially once people are educated on what chiropractic treatment is, is to become pro more proactive with your health. Before you get any problems affecting your muscles, bones, joints, especially on the spine, come through for treatment. So we proactively manipulate and mobilize that spine, realign the joints. So we decrease your risk of injury going forward. If you participate in sports, whether it's socially or professionally, the one thing sports people do not want is to shorten their career by injury. Therefore, you don't wait till you get injured and then come for treatment. You say, I participate in a specific sport, let's say it is rugby, socially on the weekends. You come for treatment to us, we make sure that the spine is working fine, the joints don't have any restrictions, you have adequate blood flow, and can you participate in the sport such that you reduce your risk of injury? So even if you sustain a fall, your body is strong enough and you don't end up having such uh, advanced trauma that we have to put you on a very rigorous and aggressive treatment. I hope that makes sense. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Melissa. Now, with the physiotherapy treatment, as it says there, you get the history of the patient. I'm sure by the time people come for physiotherapy, they have moved all over to many, many doctors. And lastly, they are to try this, as I said. When we come to us, the doctor must just to see you are having just lower back pain or you have a back pain. But for us, we don't rush to treat that part which the doctor has referred you to. So we take our own history, do our own physical examination. By doing it, you understand the body of the patient. And that is when most of them have already gone for MRI or X-ray. So we ask them to come with those examinations they did. We look at it in our own capacity as physical therapists. There are some things we physical therapists see in X-ray and MRI in opposed to our medical doctors. They might see just there is no bone broken or there is no misalignment of the bone, but for us is what we look at. Because as Dr. Berusha is saying, any minor misalignment on any joint of your body, it is, has effects on you. So when we realize what is causing your misalignment, is the first thing is to advise you. If it is the X-ray they took and it is not taking position of where we are finding the problem is, we will ask you to go for the another X-ray. Without that, we can't be able to treat you. So before we treat you, we make you understand 
what is what we have found in you as the problem causing your pain. When we agree on that, we tell you we have to take time. We give you between at least a minimum of four to at least a maximum of 10 sessions of our treatment, which we explain to the patient what we shall do. And as I said, being joint and bone weak is that every muscle is attached to end of the joint or the beginning of a joint. When there is that pain in any area, let's say for the neck, all the muscles around there, they are always with what we care called spasms or tightness. When they become tight or spasmed, they pull from the where they are touched or where they are ended from. This causes a lot of tension between the muscle, the ligament and the tendons towards the middle of that muscle. So if it was a neck hurting, you will find seriously that it is turned to one side, maybe even not the side which is hurting. So for the physios have to work on that tension of that muscle. We did this it with our own hands, as you say, we don't use surgical or anything. With our own hands, we manipulate that muscle, we mobilize the joint until the muscle accepts to relax, to be able to go back to its position. Most of people say it is painful, but you say there is no medicine which is sweet. So we have to do it on you to your own comfort. We work on it maybe first and second and that session. By the fourth lesson, you will come to us and tell us there is no pain. But for us, we know it is the muscle which has gone back to normal. But whatever caused the injury is not treated. So that's where we start using what we call our modalities. We might use heat, cold, and a special machine which penetrates up to where the muscle is starting called ultrasound therapy. We have ultrasound for X-ray, but this one is for therapeutic treatment. By doing even dry needling, joint mobilization, when the pain is finished, we use all those exercises. When we are sure that we will examine you again, to compare it with the first one we did, we will see that you are much better. This is when we start exercises and stretching you. And to maintain that condition of that muscle not to go back where it was, we ask you to do maybe only two exercises for the whole week when you come next time. We don't give you a lot of exercises to start with. We will target which will make that particular area or muscles to be able to do their work without being aggravated. If we do the examination and we find that it is not the right thing for us to do, we always refer to the right people. Otherwise, if it is the correct one, we will treat. If it is not a good diagnosis, we might be having to, you come to us with the pain on the back and we find maybe with the X-ray, we find there's something to do with it. Tumor or cancer, we need to treat you. We will refer you back to the doctor. The others who come with a complete injury without knowing they are broken bones inside there, which was long time ago. We don't treat, we refer you to the right people to do it. And in that, we have a program with you. Even if we treat you, get better, but you're working on the desk for so many, we ask you to come once a month for maintaining your muscles not to go back to where it was. And that's what we do in physiotherapy treatment. Okay, I think with the benefits of chiropractic and physiotherapy treatment, we've already been through it already, but you can just have a look at it. It's quite self-explanatory on the slides. Uh, if we have to talk about it in detail, I think we're going to run out of time and we're not going to get questions and answers done. Both Dr. Dionisa and I are very passionate in what we do, so we like talking a lot about our profession. Um, these are quite self-explanatory, you can go through them, but um, let's leave some time. I think we only have 15 minutes left. We want to engage with the audience to take in quite a lot of uh, questions and answers. Yeah. So we've been through that, we've covered this. 
Let's go through the common chiropractic questions. I like these list of questions because there's never a time when I see a patient for the first time that by default, I do not explain all of this that is happening. So the first question is what happens to a chiropractic adjustment? All we do is like I said, it's hands-on therapy. We would find exactly that joint that is not moving at all. We are trained in certain techniques where we hold the joint in a specific way and we manually bring movement back to that joint. And that's the only way to get that joint moving. There's nothing else. There's no other technology that has the ability to focus specifically on the joint and in a safe way, manually bring that movement back to joint to the joint. It normally involves us holding onto that joint on specific structures and just adding a little bit of a quick thrust or a movement and that would unlock the joint and bring movement back. That manipulation or that manual movement that we bring back is what is referred to as a chiropractic adjustment. As soon as the chiropractic adjustment takes place, you'll hear the popping sound. Now, why that popping sound is there is when a joint locks and stops moving at all, whatever gas was in that joint, supplying that joint, gets trapped in that joint. Now, the common gases in our body is nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So when we release that joint and we bring movement back, the gas that was trapped releases, and that's a popping noise you hear. Like when a person burps, it's the same thing. Then the next thing a patient would ask is, because we explain about the popping noise, they say, how painful is this going to be? Chiropractic treatment has no pain at all, not even during an adjustment. The only thing that may give you a bit of discomfort is if you have a tight muscle, we need to put you in a specific position to adjust and putting you in that position may cause that muscle to stretch. So at most you'll feel a stretching sensation, but never acute stretching pain. It will just be a stretch sensation and then the adjustment is pain free. But an adjustment works immediately. So as soon as you get off from the treatment bed, you will walk differently, you will feel differently and you will feel greater mobility. So sometimes we get patients walking into our rooms limping, dragging their leg behind them because the joints are locked and it's not giving that ability to move. As soon as we release the joints, they're able to walk better. That does not mean chiropractic treatment is miraculous treatment. Um, that we've been given the grace of God and these extra powers to do what we do. This is all evidence-based medicine that is clinical. Yes, we'll give you that relief in the first session, but one session is never enough to cure you completely. And therefore, as Dr. Dionisa said, when we put a treatment plan together, we'll be able to tell you, do you need two sessions or three sessions? It's always dependent on that case history, the pre-existing medical status of that patient, how they injure themselves, how many areas are affected to determine exactly how many treatment sessions are needed. But coming back to point number three, there is no pain that you will experience in chiropractic adjustment. So immediately after what happens to, after a chiropractic adjustment, like I said, there'll be increased blood flow immediately going into the joint because the joint was not moving. Wherever a structure in the body has no movement to their neuromuscular skeletal system, that has now decreased blood supply. That is very, very dangerous for the body because the body should always have an adequate blood supply to all areas. Why? Because blood flow brings in all the nutrition that I explained earlier and takes away all the toxic substances that are stuck in their joint. So the first thing is there'll be increased blood flow. Secondly, there's increased range of movement. Therefore, by default, there's decreased uh, pain. The fourth thing and one of the most important things is there's increased nerve firing. We have to ensure that our nervous system is at its optimal health because we can have bones, we can have muscles, we can have joints. But if the nerves not running through these bones and joints are not working optimally, automatically the mobility is lacking. Automatically there'll be symptoms of pain and discomfort. So that's why we look at the neuromusculoskeletal in totality, which I reiterate again, neuromusculoskeletal refers to all the muscles in the body, all the bones in the body where they need to form joints, the, nerve, the tendons and ligaments that support the joints, and then the nerves that run through these structures. And I think that covers those questions. Hmm. And there are policy and devices always love your spine, because that is where everything moves a human being. And it's yeah. taken for granted. Yes. Um, in closing, just to what Dr. Dionysus say and why we use the motto of love your spine is, yes, the spine is taken for granted. And also um, because it's a central core of our body, 
We tend to overuse it but not realizing it. The body can handle a lot of stress and strain, but obviously there comes to a point where we need the intervention for that spine. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Thank you. Um, that was very, very insightful. Thank you, Dr. Dion. Dr. Verusha, thank you so much. I mean, I've learned a lot myself. <laughs> so oh, yeah. it's also really good. And I'm hoping also the audience have really, you know, learned a lot as well. So uh, maybe let's just jump into the questions. Um, so there are a couple of questions which I've seen from patients who had sent in before through mail. Um, but I think you've covered most of it. One question that a patient had asked was, can I get relief after one session, which you've already answered um, that question, Doc. Um, another question asked was, what does consultation include when I'm visiting chiropractic and physiotherapy health center? I think which Dr. Dion, we also touched base on that as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I like one question where somebody called Annie I can't see any Joe. Yes. yes. I think that's a nice Sorry? Do you mind? I think that's a very nice question yes. that she has asked. And I think many people probably yes. have that question. She asked, mm -hmm. can anyone without a known problem come in for a chiropractic test? And if so, from what age, please? Mm -hmm. So to answer that question, and it's a brilliant question because remember, not many people know about spine specialists. So that's a relevant question. As long as you have a spine, you need a chiropractic assessment, whether you have symptoms or not. Ideally, in first world countries where there's many chiropractors and uh, people know about it, they are more proactive in visiting a chiropractor. So even if you have no symptoms in the spine, then we do proactive care. You come in, we do the full assessment as if you have a problem, even though we know you don't have a problem, and we are able to detect minor issues with the spine, like a specific level in your spine does not have movement, we would then adjust and rectify that before it becomes a problem later on and actually gives the symptoms of decreased range of movement and pain. We would also assess the soft tissue and if I find that the soft tissue in that area is tight and there is a problem, we would then also refer to the physio. When it comes to age, absolutely no age is required. I treat babies with colic from the first day that they are born. I would like to see quite a lot of the young children to teach them properly on adopting the correct posture from a young age, because like I reiterate, it's a technologically advanced and digitally driven world. We are all using technology at the moment and nobody advises us on the correct way in which our posture should be while using this technology. There's a word we haven't touched on because of time constraints called ergonomics. And I think that is a topic for a different day where we talk about what is the correct posture that we utilize when we're using all these latest equipment that we are using in our daily lives, like laptops, like sitting at a desk for prolonged periods of time, like students, especially youngsters in primary school, if they are not taught the correct posture, they take that bad posture into high school, which they then take into university, which they then take into their working world. So we are now finding that people are entering the working place already with back pain, then that corporate environment is just going to aggravate their symptoms. So there is no age that we would not see a patient. I always tell patients, as long as you have a spine, you need to be seeing a chiropractor. So only those that don't have a spine don't need to, and they don't exist. There is that question about uh, what causes nerve impingement on the shoulder. And how do you treat it? Mm -hmm. And she is asking whether you have to do surgery. Mm -hmm. Nerve impingement of a shoulder doesn't need surgery. The, pro the cause of the nerve impingement is a chronic tightness on your neck. And especially due to posture, you tend to lean on one side of your neck than the other. Our nerve, which comes to supply our hand, passes through the shoulder, under the shoulder. It's a very big nerve, but it goes distributing. So if there is chronic pressure on this trunk of the nerve towards the shoulder, it will always be pressed. And what there is, is that it refers pain to the shoulder. 
while the problem is not the shoulder, neither the neck impediment at the shoulder, it's all a bit from the neck. So if the neck problem, which is causing pressure on that nerve, major nerve, going down the arm, if it is risky through physio and chiropractor, you will find the impediment goes away and you are able to move your arm and use your shoulder properly. But if it is not reduced, it will continue to affect nerve supply in pitch, I mean, in lower, such that the whole muscles around your shoulder will start to waste, becoming thin. And you'll find that it's not only your shoulder hurting or having the problem of impingement, it will go even to your shoulder blade. And that way you start leaning on one side, causing the spine to follow you. So you have a curvature going to the side where there is nerve impediment of a shoulder. So always have it done physically. Doesn't need surgery. Okay, um, I would like to take the question by an anonymous attendee. I think it's a very relevant and extremely important question. It is a question on where a patient had breast cancer or has breast cancer and currently have a treatment. We see a lot of cancer patients. Sadly, in this day and age, cancer is everywhere. So many people struggle with it. Now, obviously, the first line of treatment for that patient is their oncology treatment with radiation and chemotherapy. Where we come in is the side effects and after effects of that treatment. So while they are in treatment with the oncologist, we can still see them, or after they're done with their treatment, they can see us. What chemotherapy and radiation does, it tends to weaken the physical body. So it will weaken the muscles, it will weaken the joints, and the person struggles with mobility. Now, this is very frustrating for the patient because as it is, they went through the mental and emotional trauma of having to deal with cancer. They went through the physical side effects of chemotherapy and radiation. Now they get to the side effects where they're struggling to do simple things like sit up, use the toilet, get back into bed, and that can drain a patient even more. So what we work in is exactly the same. We look at all those muscles that have been affected and obviously weakened by the effects of their treatment. And we try and get rid of all those spasms. We manipulate the joints to bring more movement back. And then what's critical is to try and strengthen that area. When we strengthen that area, it will bring mobility back to the patient. So those functions that they were struggling with, which should be so easy for everyone else, they struggle with it. And that can really bring down that patient and depression can set in because they have so much that they have to deal with in a short space of time. So I've treated personally and even here and back in my practice in South Africa, I've treated patients who are on chemotherapy or who have already had chemotherapy. And all we're trying to do is our best to bring strength back to them and teach them ways in which to move around because we don't want their mobility to be affected. We want them to still carry on the daily activities and not have that affected. So yes, we can still help you with the low back, with weakness in the legs, muscle atrophy, as well as the upper one. Okay. So what do yes. you ask? We've done all these questions. No, that no, one not yet. Can manage reverse yeah. peripheral neuropathy? Yes. So reverse is a very it's a very strong word to use. The causes of, let's talk what exactly is peripheral neuropathy. Yes. Peripheral neuropathy refers to the nerves in the ends of the feet and the legs. And neuropathy is pain, which can lead to a lack of function of those nerves. Now there's two major causes for peripheral neuropathy. The big one, which is from the more, most common cause is diabetes mellitus type two. Because with diabetes mellitus type two, it causes damage to the nerve endings. Therefore, you hear stories of where a person with chronic diabetes mellitus puts their hand on a hot stove. They have no idea that that hand is burning away until they can smell the flesh burning. That's how bad and dangerous peripheral neuropathy is. Okay. The other second cause of peripheral neuropathy is chronic alcoholism. Now, once peripheral neuropathy has set in, sadly, the nerves are damaged and we can't reverse nerve damage. There is no research to date that can say, how do we regenerate those nerves? If that was the case, it would be excellent, especially for our diabetic patients. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why gangrene becomes such a big problem in diabetic patients because they have no nervous supply in their feet. Once they get a cut 
or a sore in the feet, they can't feel anything, and that tends to get infected, and then eventually it has to be amputated. So yes, while we can't reverse it and we can't cure it, we can definitely treat the side effects and symptoms of it so that a patient is more aware of how to take care of their feet health such that they don't end up in that position where they get injured and they can't treat. Peripheral neuropathy also tends to affect mobility of the feet. So patients are not very confident in standing and walking. It can also cause a lot of weakness in the muscles, especially in the calf muscles. And that's when we would do the strengthening exercises to rehabilitate those muscles. Okay. Somebody is asking if it is recommended to see a spine specialist first before a physiotherapist. Well, the physiotherapists are also trained people or professionals where they can be able to decide on your condition. But this is all determined by the individual. If you feel like seeing a specialist first, spine specialist first, it's okay. And if you, whatever you are specialist, you say we accept it. But as I said, between medical doctors and physical therapists, what we see in your spine without using any drugs is also different from what they see. They will look at the spine as if there is any deformity in your spine or in your bones. But for us, the chiropractor and the physiotherapist, we will see something different than what they will see in their own management. So it's good you see the specialist. If you feel already you are comfortable with it, you can continue. But if you feel there is something you need to know more, you can always come and see a chiropractor or a physical therapist, and they will give you the opinion of your problem. Okay, so another question that I think is important is, can physiotherapy and chiropractic care be used to treat cerebral palsy? Well, we know okay. cerebral palsy cannot be cured, yes. but what we can do is the one thing that we can find in cerebral palsy, and this is where the physiotherapy comes more into yeah, play than the chiropractic treatment because of the uh, rehabilitation that yes. you can do, the strengthening that you can do, and the assistance with movement of the patient to help them be more stronger and confident in their mobility. Because the one thing we never want our patients to experience are fall injuries because fall injuries can cause a lot of damage. And if a patient falls and hits their head, then it's a whole new ball game because they could have hemorrhages and that sort of thing that affects the brain. So our main concern is, can that patient walk and do their daily activities comfortably without the risk of falling and injuring themselves? Okay, somebody's asking, what is clear therapy? <laughs> the clear therapy is the use of cord compressions or ice or parks. There some people use food which is put in the freezer to treat some areas. So cryotherapy is use of cord for treatment of injuries or diseases, depending on what the therapist can advise. I think the next question on physiotherapy being certified is your yeah. take that one. How to confirm if my physiotherapist Certified. Well, every physiotherapist has a certificate to show where they trained. And the other thing, we have a body in Kenya called Physiotherapy Council of Kenya. This is the regulatory body in this country. I've been being approved, all passed by the parliament. So you have to be certified by that and given a certificate for practicing if you are in this country. Otherwise, you are not supposed to practice without a certificate from Physiotherapy Council of Kenya, which is based in the Ministry of Health. So every physiotherapist should be showing the certificates. Um, I would like to answer the next question, Dr. Okay. Janice, yeah. because this is a common one and it's a very big misconception amongst treatment of the physical body. What does therapeutic massage entail? I'm yeah. interested. Mm -hmm. Now, Therapeutic is the word that refers to treatment, where we're actually giving medical treatment. Massaging is what we find at the spas and all these beauty places because we want to pamper ourselves and make ourselves feel good. 
there's a very big difference between the two because people feel that if I have back pain, I'll just go to the spa and get a massage and I'll be fine. There's a difference between treating a muscle for a medical condition and having a feel-good treatment. Massage therapy is always a feel-good treatment and we say it causes relaxation. Why it does that is because in our skin, we have nerve endings. Every time a person massages, it stimulates those nerve endings and it a feel-good sensation. If you massage your own leg, it will never feel as good as if somebody else has to massage you, right? That's because you don't have the ability to activate your own nerve endings. And this comes with the physics of electrons and how it moves from one person to another. But if somebody else has to massage, they have the ability to activate those nerve endings. And when they activate the nerve endings, it's a feel-good sensation. Then your brain will release those happy hormones like serotonin and dopamine. And you get that overall effect of relaxation and I feel great. Once you leave, a few hours later, you're back to normal. So people should never misconstrue using that massage to feel good as medical treatment for a medical condition in their muscles, bones, and joints. Now, physiotherapy, correct me if I'm wrong, they yeah. have a component where they do massaging that's called therapeutic massage because they do specific techniques to get into the muscle and get rid of that medical condition yeah. like a myofascial trigger point. So that's the very big difference. And we need to really stress on that because there's a huge misconception that Thai massaging and spa massaging and a hot oil massage and hot stone massage is going to treat you of your back pain and you're not going to have it again. There's a difference between enjoying it and having medical treatment. Okay. I will talk, answer the question of somebody saying it's personal. And he has pain, so she, a good to Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, is that you have pains when you go in a hurry, and especially when you go upstairs. The other thing is that last year you had one knee with a pain, now it is the other one. Whenever you have problems on your knee, the knee is the joint, and the joint is where the bone of the lower leg and the upper leg meet. For you to feel a pain in the knee, it means that if you have not fallen or had an accident, it means that the muscle and tendons and ligaments joining the two bones are not well in alignment. When we look at you in that position, you will find that the muscle which joins the hip and the knee has an issue. Most of the people call it ITB or idiotypial bag. Whenever that muscle shortens, you will never be able to run in a hurry. The knee will always hurt. After the, that, it, tip your body is not in proper position. The pain of your knee, especially the outer side or the inner side of your thigh, will not be always uncomfortable. So whenever you have the pains in the knees and not a trauma, that is not an accident, your muscles of the thigh are not in alignment. And they are muscles, some are short, some are thick, some are loose. So there is no coordination in your knees. And that's when you start learning in a hurry, they don't coordinate and you feel the pain on the knees. So it's good to be checked on your knees and thigh muscles. I would like to answer the next question, if you don't mind, even though it has the word physiotherapy. No, it's it's, it's right. a yeah. question that says, I constantly experience muscle tremors. Will physiotherapy help to ease them? So before we come to the treatment, let's talk about the word tremor. tremor. Now, when we look at our nervous system in the body, it's made up of two distinct parts. You have the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is housed in our cranium and the spinal cord is in our spinal canal. So you can actually have any disorder in the central nervous system, which can give you symptoms of a tremor. Secondly, you can get tremors from having a poor diet. The muscle requires certain elements and supplements like calcium, magnesium, potassium. You could have low in one of them, and that's when the tremor, tremor comes in. Or you can get tremors from your peripheral nervous system. That is the nervous system that's found outside of your central nervous system. So in order for us to adequately treat that tremor, we need to understand where's that root cause of the tremor coming from? Is it just a dietary and nutritional problem? 
Then it's simple to treat. We will run a blood test. We'll see which of your elements are low, and then we'll give you the supplement, and that tremor should go away. Is it from the peripheral nervous system? Then we'll do certain tests that we call the dermatomes, myotomes, reflexes, and there's various other nervous tests that we can do. If that is no abnormalities detected, then by default, we have to then refer to a neurologist who will then specialize in the central nervous system, and they will then do their test. And if we find the root cause of the problem, then it's best to treat it. That is a correct management of a tremor because that has implications if it is in the central nervous system. That correct. is true. Then Roger, I can see there is... It says, with patients with spinal injuries, at what time do they seek your services? They seek our services ASAP. That's okay, exactly. because our big thing is we don't want you to live with your problem for one year and then come to us because the amount of work we do for a problem that's been there for one year is much more intense and will take longer than a person that had the problem on Sunday and came to us on Monday. And just to confirm based on that question, your body talks to you. You need to learn to understand what your body is saying. Pain is the biggest way in which your body communicates that something is wrong. Discomfort, decreased range of movement, swelling, is all the ways in which your body uses these symptoms to tell you that something is wrong. You can understand you have these symptoms and you can go to it. You can say, I will treat it some other time, it will resolve, I'm too busy with everything else to sort it out now. Or when it starts to get a little bit more serious, you'll say, let me just go to the pharmacy, take medication and it will help and sort it out. Or you go to the third part and say, I need to go to some specialist who can do a thorough examination, give me the correct diagnosis and treat it. Now, either pathway, that decision is up to the patient. But I can guarantee you when it comes to the neuromusculoskeletal system, there is no way that any condition will self-resolve. What tends to happen is if one structure is affected and not treated, the other areas in that part of the body will then have to work harder to compensate because the body will always work towards, I want to move, I need to move. So if one part of the body is stuck, it's not moving at all, it has, the muscle has a spasm, it's not helping the neuromusculoskeletal system to move, other structures will then work harder to help it move, then those structures tend to get affected. So sometimes a patient will start off with neck pain, then eventually it will translate into headaches. So it goes upwards, then sometimes it will translate downwards into middle back pain. If we leave that, it will go into the shoulders, then the patient has decreased range of movement in the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers the question by saying, the moment you have these symptoms, get it sorted out as soon as possible. If it's acute, you may need two or three sessions. If you leave it for a year or two, we don't perform miracles, we will do thorough treatment and it may take longer, like four or five sessions or more. Okay, somebody is asking, can a pregnant woman do adjustment of the spine and what is it? No, we do not adjust the spine, but what we can do is adjust, so we don't adjust the low back region because we don't want to compromise the integrity of the fetus and the baby. What we can do is adjustments of the middle part of the back because there's always strain on the back. We can adjust the neck and we can look at the lower limbs and adjust it. We will also refer them to physiotherapy treatment. So while we can't adjust the low back, we can then look at the soft tissue around the low back and the pelvis to try and relieve the symptoms. And that gives the patient uh, a lot of relief. In an ideal world, and we don't live in an ideal world, any part of this world, whether it's first world country or third world country, the ideal world says that if a woman is preparing to be pregnant, she should first undergo strengthening of that low back to prepare the body for nine months of an increased weight onto that spine. But we know that that doesn't exist. So our job is we come in while the patient is pregnant, but definitely after she's had the baby, we wait for her six month, uh, her six week uh, assessment with the gynecologist. And once the, once the gynecologist is able, able to give her a clean bill of health, she then comes to, to the chiropractor and then we realign her entire spine and all the other joints that took strain from that increased weight for nine months. Remember also, after a woman gives birth, she will be breastfeeding, she will be in awkward postures to change the diaper, feed baby, bark baby, everyday baby gets heavier. But as a mother, your posture remains the same. You'll be picking up a baby that's getting heavier all the time from the floor, from the bathtub. Then before you know it, baby starts walking, you are getting your cardio exercise, chasing that baby, 
all at the time when you do not have your spinal strains and strains assessed after you have a baby. So when women come to us after they had a baby for two years, there's multiple areas that we need to treat. The pain and the stiffness and tightness is quite advanced. So then we need a longer time to treat them. And that can be prevented if we see them soon. The next one, which I think is still Dr. Perusha, you can answer, mm. is somebody has chronic insomnia. Okay. Chronic insomnia is not to do with the neuromusculoskeletal system. Yes. When we look at chronic insomnia, the first thing we need to look at is mental health, emotional health. Because most of the time, people don't sleep because we, what we call in layman's terms, the wheels keep turning. The wheels keep turning because you have something that you need to do and you're anticipating it for the future. Maybe there's a project that you need to present and you're going to run out of time. You don't know whether you're going to make it in time. Maybe there's some personal trauma issues. So the best way to treat insomnia is go to a therapist, a counselor, psychologist, and let them work with you and they do cognitive behavior therapy to determine what exactly is causing your insomnia. What we can treat is the side effects of the insomnia, because you're twisting and turning all the time, you're not getting enough relaxation to the neuromuscular skeletal system, we can then treat the neck pain and the upper back pain. But in all fairness, insomnia is something that's out of our area of speciality. One minute, please. Mm, how many I'm sessions does nice. one intend to need for changes to be experienced? You will experience changes after you walk out of here, after your first session of treatment. Like I said, we're not miracle workers, so we can't do one session and say you are done, dusted, you are on your way. It all depends on what we find in the case history, what we find in your uh, physical examination, and how long have you had this problem? Because remember, if a patient comes to us today with right-sided low back pain, there is no way we're treating you only on the right side of your low back. We'll treat you right side, we'll treat you low. Left side, we'll treat the upper part of the low back, which is where the low back meets your upper back. And we will also include the pelvis and the hip area because if it's chronic, that whole area works together as one multifunctional unit. Therefore, we have to treat that whole area to give you relief. But I can guarantee you, when you walk out of here, you'll feel much better than when you're walking. But not right here up until you finish the treatment. I think that's the answer. What is the difference between chiropractic and physiotherapy and physiotherapy? Yes, but can't differentiate. Mm. Okay, I'm sure you guys have access to the copy of the slide, so you can then read through that and it will show you the actual difference. Mm. The other thing I want to want to do about the sessions to add what Dr. Kavisa say is that due to the length of this condition you are having, you might find that the first two sessions you feel even worse than when you came in. So always when you get the first two treatments and the pain is more. It doesn't mean you are being treated badly. It tells you that there's something which has been relieved. We call it guarding, muscle guard. When the muscle guard is removed, you will feel more pain because what was protecting you has already disappeared. So always give it time, at least give between four to six sessions. If there is no improvement, even your physical therapist or chiropractor will advise you on the way forward. That happens in the soft tissue because mm. if it's chronic, the soft tissue will resist. Because what happens is the body gets so used to being in that abnormal state that it starts to see that abnormal state as normal. So when you do the soft tissue, you have to override the nervous system to say, well, that's actually not the normal because we'll treat and the body will resist and go back to what it perceives is the normal because this problem is chronic. And then we've got to override that. With chiropractic treatment, we don't have the pain like a physiotherapy treatment, um, and we won't have discomfort for the first two sessions because we work directly on the nervous system. But with physiotherapy treatment, after we are reset that nervous system and we reprogram it, we then work on the muscles to re restore their muscle memory to what it was before. And that is definitely part of our treatment. Then it's a question that when she has said, yes, then what? Can I read that? Where are can we get this done with Dr. Perusha? Okay, thank you, Dion, for that response. I've done physiotherapy on the shoulder and I had a chiropractor see me. The pain reduced but did not go away. Now she's back even worse than before and I cannot step on that side of the shoulder. 
what do you advise? The mobility of the shoulder is good, but painful. Well, clearly you have not completed the treatment because mm -hmm. if we treat you for the first time and the second time, it's symptomatic relief. But we look here at the chiropractic and physiotherapy health center in providing you with a treatment plan aimed at curative treatment. If we treat you halfway, you may find that your symptoms are gone and you say, well, I got no pain, I got no discomfort, why do I need to carry on with treatment? But up until we do our physical treatment, assessment after you're done with your treatment and we say you are now cured then we can put you on your stretching and strengthening program because if you are not cured but your symptoms are gone then obviously this problem is going to come back and we're going to start all over again so before we so-called discharge you we have to give you have to get clearance from us and we do a physical examination again on that the other thing is, what do you do? What is your day-to-day -day work? Maybe it is being caused by the way you are doing your day-to-day -day work. That is what is causing it to recur. So you need it to be shown a proper way of ergonomic, how to sit, how to work, how to position your neck so as to protect the nerve impeachment again. So I would want to know how is it related to your job and the way you sit. Or you work. And on the last part of that question, which I think is very important to answer, every single time the neuromusculoskeletal system has been strained, sprained, or injured, or in actual pain and discomfort, it has already become a weakened area. So if we just treat and from a medical point of view, you are fine, we will not release you without putting you on a strengthening program because that area is already weak. You're going to go back to your daily lifestyle. You're still going to stay in your same occupation. You're still going to expose yourself to all the positive factors that caused you the initial problem in the first place. So we know if that area is not strong enough, you're going to go back and guess what? One year's time, you're coming back to us. So we try and prevent that by saying, please be compliant to the strengthening program that we're going to give you. Do it as often as you can. And if you feel the need to come to maintenance, meaning once every six months, you're more than welcome to come through. But our job is to make sure that you don't have this problem coming back by ensuring that that area is strengthened again. So for example, if a woman had a baby after nine months and she had low back pain, by default, that area is a weakened area. And she will suffer with chronic low back pain because of all the activity she's going to be participating in, in raising the baby. So we have to put her on a treatment plan to treat, stretch out that area, and then you have to strengthen that area. And if a woman had a baby and then she didn't sort that out and didn't go through that correct channel, didn't strengthen her low back, and then had a second pregnancy, you can only imagine the ill health of her low back after that second pregnancy. And moms out there would totally relate to what I'm saying. Okay. The last question I can see there is somebody asked, what causes one to have many long and painful muscle pulls at 64 years old? Well, being a woman, isn't somebody a lady, is that when we reach our age of 45, we get menopause. Menopause means something, one of the hormones is reducing in your body. And that's what is called menopause. But people forget that after finishing the menopause, there's another hormone which is called estrogen. Yeah? When it starts reducing, it is the one which controls our muscle movement and how much emphasis are introduced in the body. So after 64, there is that estrogen which misses in our body, and you can be in one position and the muscle pull is so strong. So I would advise apart from physiotherapy, chiropractic and muscle relaxing, always see your gyno. She or he will help you with the how to control the hormone called estrogen to reduce those muscle pulls, which are so painful. That one could be not physical, could it be hormonal. And just to add on to that, that, yes, in general. So Let's talk about muscle pulls in certain categories. The first one is there's muscle pulls that are experienced in children, which is now a diagnosed, it's accepted based on research that children actually experience growing pains. Before it was just a myth because we did not have research to back up this, but now it has been confirmed that it is a medical condition. As the long bones are increasing, it causes the muscles to increase in length and the muscles tend to be very painful. So that is something that can happen in the youngsters. 
But when we're looking at a 64 year old, there's many reasons why that muscle can get pulled. Number one, we look at the actual health of the muscle fibers. Do they have trigger points in there and muscle spasms that are not being treated? If not, then that muscle will definitely pull because the muscle fibers are not healthy enough to contract and relax in the normal way. The second thing that could cause continuous muscle pulls, and I think this is probably the most common cause, is a poor diet. Muscles require certain um, nutritional requirements, calcium, magnesium, potassium, to ensure, and chlorine to ensure the proper functioning of that muscle fiber. So in that case, we'd want to send a patient, obviously after doing the history and if this is justified, we'd want to send the patient for a blood test to see those elements that that muscle requires to maintain its functioning. Are they lacking any one of the elements? Because if they are, then it's gonna pull. For example, cramping, we all know when we have terrible cramps, they recommend sodium chloride, which is salt, because that patient is lacking in salt. We say put a piece of salt under your tongue so it can be absorbed quickly into the blood system and that can help with cramping. Um, and I think the other thing is we would look at what was the trauma of that person now that they're 64? What was the trauma? What was their lifestyle back then? Is that muscle really weak? Are there any joints that are locked that they're then putting extra pressure on that muscle? So there are very many reasons as to why there could be a lot of muscle pulls. But if there's no trauma, the first thing I would want to look at is the nutrition. Why is that muscle pulling? Okay. The other one I can see there is, can arthritis be cured? Oh, no. Okay, the two main types of, what exactly is arthritis? It means there's inflammation in our joints. Okay, there's two types of arthritis that we get. We get rheumatoid arthritis and we get osteoarthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. It's where your body starts attacking your own body and it attacks your joints. Now, there's many different types of treatment that you can do with rheumatoid arthritis. The quicker you actually get the diagnosis, the better it is to start with treatment. We're actually finding that there's a cancer drug called methotrexate that seems to be very effective with rheumatoid arthritis. Patients also get a lot of prednisone, which is steroids to help treat with the pain and the swelling. They put on very strong pain medication. And the biggest problem with that is while it does give that symptomatic relief, we have to look at the long-term effects of prednisone on the body, long-term effects of pain medication and methotrexate. So while we cannot cure rheumatoid arthritis, we have patients that have RA that we can help them in terms of their mobility, in terms of pain control, and diet becomes very critical in managing long-term rheumatoid arthritis. The second thing is we get osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is when the cartilage around those joints get degenerated and that joint then becomes inflamed. Osteoarthritis is most common in the knee joints and it tends to affect that mobility. Yet again, we haven't developed in terms of medical science, how do we go replace that cartilage? But what we can do is there's supplements and medication, and there are other treatments out there that can temporarily uh, reduce the symptoms. Another thing is when you have osteoarthritis, for example, in that knee joint, it has a, it's a now weakened structure. So what we can do is do stretching and strengthening program for the thigh and the calf muscles to give strength to that knee joint. So the pressure on the knee joint is reduced. Good. Now, I think the other questions you can answer them through our internet to Elizabeth so that you can send them to her, then she can be able to send it to the client. And thank you for the questions. Please, even those who have not yet reached their questions, we are ready to answer them. Just put them through, Elizabeth will get it to us. We will yes, we will respond to them. Thank you very much for listening to us. We are really grateful. Thank you very much. And I hope our advice has helped, even though it's been a short session. Thank you so much, Dr. Dion and Dr. Verusha for the great insights and the information you've shared with us and the audience in regards to bones and joints. The webinar has been truly, truly insightful. We truly are, um, are very appreciative of you know, the information given. We also like to give our thanks to our audience, you know, for engaging with us, sending the questions for, you know, for Dr. Dion and Dr. Berusha to go through and answer extensively and in depth in terms of, you know, what exactly to do. So in the case that maybe the patients would like to visit chiropractic and physiotherapy health center for treatment, kindly please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we've indicated the number there. 
So you can you can reach out to us through My Health Africa, and we will direct you to Dr. Dion, Dr. Berusha, or any other specialist who is in chiropractic and physiotherapy health center who can provide the service um, to you. Um, I think that's it from our end. Um, yeah, in case of the inquiries as they come, we'll just send them to you. I'm sure we'll get assistance in terms of the um, responses, and then we'll share that back with the um, with the patients. So I think that's it from our end. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.